All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Kobayashi's, Kobayashi's Dragon, Dragon Maid, Episode 7. seven. All Last right. episode was, uh, well, it was a bit crazy at some parts, mm -hmm. but also very sweet and whatnot. Floofy, mm -hmm. wonderful. Yep. Uh, we got to have some Twister. <laughs> we yes. got to have Fafnir. With just, the hair just, flip. Just, yes, yeah. being mm -hmm. uh, worth it. Absolutely. Yes, just absolute hit. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had uh, Lukoa. Uh, mm, and yes. her human that she was uh, uh, residing with. Yes, and the questionable uh, longevity of that. <laughs> but sure, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. they are a family of mages. Right. So, yeah. So, All right, so maybe, fate, you know? maybe that means that Kana and Toru can step up their play now, you know, because, uh, because mm. clearly the human standards, what humans are capable of, is not just limited to Kobayashi's, uh, you know, back right. pain and everything right. like that. They can just send increasingly more difficult spells at the kid until he's not able to counterspell anymore. There you, know? you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be that could be a pretty cool training bit yep. for him. Yeah, yep. world yep. destruction if he, you know, fails to <laughs> save. But you know, like, but this kid is a lot wiser than um, a lot of people would otherwise give him credit <laughs> yes. for, knowing the uh, that power without earning it is really worthless in the end. <laughs> yes. Indeed. <laughs> yes, Indeed. he's quite he's quite the mature little soul. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. Okay, this was right. a really good episode. Oh, yeah. Like they started yep. off as the fan servicey episode, uh -huh. and it yep. was cute and funny. Lots of like quirky little moments and stuff. I loved Kana just like oh, yeah. eating <laughs> yeah. the crab, eating yep. the, the the cricket grasshopper thing mm -hmm. in the later parts of the episode. But yep. the bits they did with Toru mm -hmm. were ha really good. Having her realizing that not only is this something that connects back to her family, mm -hmm. and I liked how both of the skits, if you will. Like really played worked yeah. and played into mm -hmm. each other there because yep. there's a lot of things in a slice of life kind of show where you're realizing that the the themes don't necessarily fit from skit to skit right mm -hmm. and this one was very much a toru focused episode yep. very much i would say integral to not only her character but some of the world building story plot reasons of why she's here even in the first place like the potential bit of that she was hurt when she was when she was found uh, by yeah. uh Kobayashi. The, the, the god weapon sword thing that was speared right through her right yeah. i'm just gonna throw out there that there's a possibility that that was something that's you know not related to her family or what have you uh -huh. but yeah. i could see it also as being a thing of where she wants to leave or run away or go to the human world or something like that her father or whoever that was uh -huh. was being like you have to kill them kill them all they have a disagreement and she gets ousted from their their lands or what have you. Mm. But Toru was a big deal. Like Toru was not like some like yeah, powerful regular enough dragon. to bring about Armageddon. Right. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. But not only that, I think she was known. Like wasn't that something mm. that was brought up that she was like I literally believe like a, so like a famous dragon in yeah. a lot of ways. Well, and uh, I I think so because but because yeah yeah mm -hmm. but but she was found mm -hmm. and accepted into a yep. new family. Right. And now she's realizing in a lot of ways that the human world in, as of what it is, is one that could accept these people. Right. And then the con is literally evidence mm -hmm. that there is a generally accepting atmosphere within humans yep. there. There's a lot of, I would say, uh, uh, conveniences and amenities to how humans have uh made the world their own in a lot mm -hmm. of ways so that others coming into this there's space right uh, there's not as much yeah. I, there is a lot of i mean this is a very wholesome show and i'm not going to get like super yeah, exactly. irl kind of with, things here with but, idealistic you know neighbors that yeah. don't, that are understanding when you say they're causing too much noise and right. things like that right absolutely mm -hmm. i would say a lot of humans are run and ruled by fear but mm -hmm. i would say in in a lot of instances where people are just seeking community and connection like this, like this mm -hmm. is the perfect example of this, the character of Kobayashi and also the character of uh, Takia, mm -hmm. there's, it's so easy for the dragons yep. to fit right in because that's the main thing they need, but they don't know how to go out and just get like, it's right. a, it's a, it's an important need of theirs. That's 
out there, but it's not getting fulfilled in the best way possible. So right, because yeah. it's because in their other world, it's not like the humans are fundamentally any different, but because of sure. the circumstances, whatever, because you know, fighting monsters and dragons and all kinds right. of that stuff is a daily occurrence. There would be this this perpetual kind of fear of those things. And yeah. then you wouldn't really be able to get along with them very, or, or right. at least you, not that you wouldn't be able to, but that you just wouldn't end up getting along with them, right? Sure. But in this situation, because, hey, yeah, they're not worried. You know, the people at the, at, at the Comic Cat, like, mm -hmm. if Toru turned into her full dragon form, they would probably freak they out. They would all right? freak out. They yeah. would all freak out, right? And the fact that Toru doing the fireworks from the top of the apartment building didn't, you know, get, like, military people freaking out you know whatever it's but yeah the point yeah. the point, the is, point is, is is that she's found a family right. she's found a family of one where she can build new memories mm -hmm. that are wholesome happy yep. wonderful memories yeah and that's normal that's okay mm -hmm. there's a lot of i would say there's a lot of people who grow up or are raised in an environment that is hostile to them and that becomes their normal so that when they go to an environment that is not like that, that is abnormal. Sure. It doesn't fit their pre-existing kind of understanding of the way insert thing is. Right. So when it happens and you're then told by them, no, this is actually normal. It's like, mm -hmm. well, rather yeah. than defining what's normal, I'm going to trust that on some level, this is something I can come to expect. This is something that I can right i can count on mm -hmm. and that is so so freeing for someone who's been in a situation that's not as i would say trusting or wholesome mm -hmm. or even safe right so and not just from the humans but the idea that from among the dragons and stuff mm -hmm. there's probably the uh expected acceptable sort of protocol with regards to humans and right. things like that and you know toru was always the strange one yeah um, yeah yeah I, I loved I, I, Kobayashi's line of um, growing. I don't think you grow up because, what was it? I think it's just because you realize that you can't stay a kid any longer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah. Right, you don't just become an adult. You right, just because stop you're being wanting a child. to be an adult. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Because um, I think one of the things that those of us that have kind of been in that transition period from child to adult more recently mm -hmm. is that you know how insufficient you are as an adult in a lot right. of ways uh -huh. you're painfully aware of it definitely so the idea that adults you know have things figured out it's like no it's not that it's more that you kind of cast off the childish things of you know begging for people mm -hmm. to do you know a thing for you um one might say aspect of dependency moving towards independence which mm -hmm. then the next step from that is interdependence, is interdependence so right. that you're able to then have that Mm -hmm. relationship connection with another person or persons and it's it's uh there's a flow in it mm -hmm. it's not purely transactional so one might say that um you know kids think that adult grown-ups just know everything right but the truth is, is that they don't know everything they just know what they know ah uh, right right exactly um, um the con whole <laughs> just was presentation bit Yep. was perfect i loved how for a split second mm -hmm. i was not sure what the rumble was and oh, then i was like yeah. oh my god yes and it's just the stampeding <laughs> of a hundred plus thousand or however many people yeah just, hundred thousand yeah just, for one of those just, kinds of conventions <laughs> yeah yeah and like i i think comiket is a is an actual con in oh, japan is. yeah okay like uh, and it's probably not that big well well if it, if it was the 80th year or whatever then Oh, they said 80th year in the Yeah, episode. it was like 80th or 90th. Oh, then something never like mind. So, no, this so is a huge con this then. Because what I, are the... I kind of want to look up just to see well, how super, many people go. Because, right, but there's there's like there's like, there's like cons where it's like 75,000 people. And mm -hmm. that's, I would say, for an annual con, that's like a pretty like... That's a that's big. That's a pretty big one, mm -hmm. but that's not like one of the super cons. Well, and... there's Aren't there like some cons where it gets to like a quarter of a million? Like, or more, I think. Yeah, well, yeah like... Because, because the... But those ones are spread out across mm -hmm. like even larger areas, right. so it's not like one big building with a bunch of mm -hmm. out outdoor things. It's well, because when I think of like Anime Expo, Anime Expo is is, is like the average biggest, big. Though. Well, well, it's the biggest anime convention yes. in North America, right? right. And mm -hmm. I think it's like a hundred thousand people or something that go to that. It's a hundred to hundred and fifty, yeah. But that's specifically anime, exactly. Just. <laughs> 
the name of this comic cat is short for comic market mm-hmm. yeah um yeah that's pretty big that's, that's basically just anything that's drawn. remotely nerdy or drawn or whatever yeah. you know like it's here so yeah i mean i could do a quick little Google yeah just, just look, here. look look comic market yeah comic um, cat is comic the... cat yeah comic cat is uh happening in may uh-huh. and in attendance 750,000 people. Oh my god. So it is probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Oh so, my god. So yeah, that is something where there's a rumbling and like that is absolute madness. Oh my god. Holy crap. That's wow. that's the rumbling that will flatten the world. Like, <laughs> yes. like, like um I wanted to bring oh. up I wanted to bring up the the scene that in terms of in terms of storytelling and in terms of what it mm-hmm. means not just for uh toru but of the connection made between uh toru and kobayashi and just um where is in it the, it's in when the... kobayashi thinks right one, when when toru wants to go back into a regular form um or... Well, no, it's the part where she's thinking about, like, I think it's something that only exists in this place in this moment right now. I ah, think everyone yes. loves that. And then she thinks back on all the moments with Kobayashi. She thinks on the yeah. moments with Kobayashi, mm-hmm. and he's like, I see, I understand that very well. Yeah. What I like about uh-huh. this is that he didn't simplify it so much to where it wasn't mm-hmm. open to interpretation, what he right. was talking about. Yeah. One of the things that's really special about any time a group of people passionately get together over a specific thing Mm -hmm. is that there is a sense that everyone here you share something in common with. So in that respect, if you were to talk passionately about insert thing here, Mm -hmm. there is a good chance that the people around you will be agreeable and accepting of that passion. One of the things that, um, uh, uh, Toru is quite passionate about specifically uh-huh. is Kobayashi Definitely. and has many mm-hmm. moments of forward uh, yeah. aspects of displaying like, that passion. When when which Kobayashi was like, "Can I ride you?" I I was surprised that Toru like didn't try and make it sexual. Just didn't go, mm, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but I think it's because of she's mm-hmm. just excited that you yeah. know she's mm-hmm. asking for something like that. And she's like, oh, yeah. "Yeah, absolutely." Yep. Um, but when it's in a dynamic where it extends to something outside of individual relationships, meaning there's a third party entity force object thing, passion, what have you. And everyone is focused on that thing. It's like the effect of a concert. Basically everyone's sure. looking in the same direction for the mm-hmm. most part, everyone's saying the same things. It, it, it gives you a high. It literally kind of gives oh, sure. you that emotional yeah. feeling of yep. I belong here. Mm-hmm. Now there's, obviously negatives that can come with that but in the standpoint of someone that finds themselves to be an outcast in general finding that on a grand scale but also a smaller scale i think Mm. in a smaller scale a lot of ways it can be even more important yes yeah and i think that's what kind of the the family is essentially Mm -hmm. but but in this case the the family not by blood but by yeah it's um, it's the follow-up on what um on what freaking Fafnir was saying the previous episode oh, about sure. humans being hit or miss. And you know mm-hmm. what? You're a hit, right? Yeah. You know, it, it's the idea that, yeah. Find your hits. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and stick by them. And and not only, like, stick by them, but, like, let them know that they're your hits, basically. Right. Exactly. In, in a lot of ways, I think we get a lot of really big things that just kind of we just have we just get to have i guess there, i i would say within the context of community there's just a lot of things that we have where we're like wow that's really amazing but i mm-hmm. i think we could honestly be a lot more grateful and show a lot more gratitude to those oh, people sure. in the yeah. communities there for that mm-hmm. specific aspect there and then i i really could feel that that toru was feeling that gratitude mm-hmm. in the, the little conversation with the cosplay uh photographer uh-huh yeah that yeah, was fun yeah. but um Great episode. Yep. Uh, Kana having her little school studies and then just mm, crunchy, eating the bugs. Flaky. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yep. yep. I love it. I love it. Um, we got foreshadowing build up for potential stuff with not only Toru's family, but mm-hmm. also why she's here at all. 
So yeah, I guess we'll uh, get a little bit more hints of plot at a uh, future point. Who knows? Um, uh, I would say if anything else to mention this episode, they kept up the Lukoa gag. Yes, she she still has not learned uh, restraint or <laughs> or uh, physical space. Um, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I guess the other thing is Fafnir has become a mangaka. Or, That's, well, he he like, wrote a he wrote a, a a book of um of curses of curses yes yes yeah so mm-hmm. I have to question is Fafnir doing this because he enjoys the human world and he wants to integrate himself a little bit uh-huh. or is he trying to sow a little bit of chaos in an indirect way because he couldn't do it himself but he's like nah. maybe I can like end the human race with a little bit of just no i think it's yeah. i think it's strictly that he's trying to basically find connection and and because because fafnir is such even even for dragons he's a bit odd right right yes um that i feel like this is something where he feels he's found some means of connection with these with these humans mm, right despite right. His, okay. his weirdness and quirkiness and stuff and he's like ah they love this stuff well, I happen to know a lot about curses. <laughs> yes. I happen to know a lot about curses. So this this is this is a good deal. This is good stuff. You know. Right. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Here you go. This is you take that to the bank. Right. I yeah. feel like Fafnir needs to join a LARPing group. Like oh, definitely. Like he needs to join that group. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, all he'll be every single time is like, I'm the villain. Right. You guys can just. Go I am up the evil me. dark dragon. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And not only that, I have very good magic tricks that mm-hmm. I can do. Yes. That can Indeed. simulate the feeling of this being more of a yeah. dungeon crawl or something like that even even down to like a fear effect i can actually yeah <laughs> like you will have to pass your uh, wisdom right, right, saves right. otherwise like you're not going to be able to face me that hero. maybe maybe <laughs> fafnir actually wouldn't do well in larping because he gets too that, into it too into it maybe maybe that whole maybe the video game the barrier video ga- game is really barrier helpful is, yeah yeah I agree. I agree. Oh, maybe man. maybe that would be a bit much, mm. but I I still think it would be funny yes. to to see though because oh, he could end up asking around at this con and be like, so mm. what are the people that do kind of cast curses and do all that kind of stuff? Yes. Like oh, larping, yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. And there's right. like there's a group over there of thirty thousand people over there. Well, yeah. yeah, it's probably much smaller than that, but but yeah, given that this con is ridiculously big, yeah, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you know what what Fafnir really needed? Oh, what's that? Is he just needed to stand there with the uh, the curse pamphlets and just flip his hair? <laughs> people would have come running. There would be know. a couple people that are really into the emo kind of get up yep. there. He would just, yeah. And they'd just, be like... Just let it be part of your character. Totally yeah. like one of my people. Yeah. But yeah. not like in a way that there's actual love and connection here. Like, like just, this is... Yeah. This yeah. is the real stuff. Mm. Yeah. It's not like a care or anything. <laughs> <laughs> i don't hate you i don't hate you too exactly oh man so good is doing a good job yep. way to go buddy mm-hmm. way to go yeah so uh y'all thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now though go check out the link in the description below for our patreon you can get on early access there you can watch full length timer reactions there and all this comes with discord access so you can chat with us and the community there about this show about anime in general and you can also talk with jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote yes i wrote a sci-fi novel it's called battle lines and it's really cool and awesome and deals with family and all that mm, stuff yeah and if you're interested you should totally check it out it's on amazon link in the description down below go get it yeah so if any of that interests you we'll see it there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time, time.